Hi guys and welcome to today's Money Honey's Buzz. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about emergencies, um, how to deal with them and mostly how to deal with them through preparation. So this topic is kind of front of mind right now where I live. Um, we are currently having a lot of trouble with flooding. Um, now for myself personally, I am living in an area that's a bit raised up, plus I'm in a condo, so I don't need to worry about it that much, but there are hundreds of people who have been evacuated from their homes, there are people out sandbagging, it's just, it's flooding like we haven't seen it before. And um, there are a lot of people who are dealing with this and you hope that they prepared to the extent that they could um, and also that they are ready to deal with having to take care of it afterwards. My own personal experience with this is twofold. Um, before I moved out of the house that I was in, I actually backed onto a river. So some years I would see the water coming closer and closer. And it was always a worry of mine that there was going to be a big flood year and I was going to have to deal with that. What I did have to deal with was having my water heater flood my whole basement one time. So I actually did experience having water damage through my basement, having to get everything torn out up to the drywall, having to throw out a bunch of things that were water damaged. So I've both had to go through an emergency and also had to think about what I would do if some things happened. So I want to talk about a few things today to think about when you are not dealing with an emergency, but to make sure that you are prepared for one. So the first thing I'm going to say is that I have talked in my Money Honey's Pathway about making sure that you have an emergency fund. That is going to be key because it's going to help you deal with anything that you need to deal with. Um, things like insurance and that will often only cover so much, and you want to make sure that in addition to the stress of any kind of emergency you might have and in your home, I'm thinking something like damage or weather or flooding or fire, that in the moment you don't feel like you are having all the stress of an emergency and then also the stress of having to go into debt while you are in that emergency. So an emergency fund is the first way to prepare yourself. I'm not gonna talk too much about that because I wanna talk about a few other things that I think are important to think about. The first is to talk about insurance. And this is not a fun thing to talk about. I mean, nobody thinks, woohoo, let's talk about insurance. But think about your house insurance and your apartment insurance. Basically, anywhere you live, you should have insurance. And I've seen some people, like I read different message boards and stuff, and oftentimes when you move into a rental, in a big managed building, they will make you have apartment insurance. They'll sh make you show that you have it. And some people will say, oh, well, where can I get it for one month so I can show that I have insurance and then I don't have to pay for it? Don't do that. And also, if nobody is making you get apartment insurance, still get it anyway. Um, basically, for a apartment, you're probably gonna be paying like 15, 20 bucks a month, maybe 25 at most. And like that's probably way high because that's in Canada. If you're in the States, it's probably cheaper. And it just covers you for so much more than you know. Like some people will say, well, my possessions are only worth like a couple thousand dollars. Why am I gonna pay apartment insurance? I'll just rebuy my things. It doesn't just cover you for that. If you flood your place, if you leave and like a faucet leaks, or your toilet explodes or something like that, um, having apartment insurance a lot of the time will help cover those kinds of damages. It just covers you in so many ways. I mean, if your, if your dog goes and bites someone, in some cases your homeowner's insurance will cover that. So. Wherever you are living, whether it's a rental or a home that you own, make sure you have insurance. If you have a home that you own, a lot of the times your mortgage provider will insist that you have homeowner's insurance. Once again, you just should. Don't make it something that somebody else is telling you that you need to do. Just know that you should always have homeowners or renters insurance no matter where you are. My second point here is know what it includes. Um, a lot of people right now in my area are discovering that their homeowners insurance covers water damage from like burst pipes or you know plumbing that kind of thing but not actually from flooding or weather conditions so really sit down and read through what your policy is or call and get them to explain it all to you what it covers what it doesn't i'm not saying that you need to get a policy that covers everything but i'm saying you should really understand what it is that you are paying for um, for a few reasons first of all then you can know if it doesn't include something that you want it to have or you can find out that maybe it includes something that you're going to need at some point and it's good for you to know that you are covered for that 
In my case of having my basement flood, um, it was not insurance that came to the rescue. Basically, um, I didn't go down into my basement that much. Uh, I was living in a home by myself and I just didn't often go down there. When I bought the home about five or six years before this happened, probably more like six or seven years before this happened, um, when I moved in, they had wall-to-wall -wall carpeting down there. It was a finished basement. And one day I went downstairs and I stepped off the top step and I felt it squish. And I didn't even know what it was. And I realized that it had probably been leaking for maybe about a week. So the carpet was completely saturated, the under pad was completely saturated, and drywall, because drywall is porous, had started to suck the moisture up into the walls so that all of the drywall was filled with moisture as well which can actually start to create mold and I was a single homeowner I was freaking out about what I was going to do I called my insurance company I had never figured out before this what my insurance covered and what it didn't um, and they said we will cover this but you need to go to the um the person you rent the water, the company that you rent the water tank from first, they're your first step and then we can cover anything that they don't. However, they did say now that I had called and told them, I had to give them assurance that it had been properly remedied before they would cover me with my insurance again the next year, which was more frustrating than I wanted it to be. But in any case, I ended up going to the water heater company, they came in, they tore everything out, they, um, put in all the right chemicals and turned on fans and dried everything out so that there was no environmental factors anymore. But what ended up happening is that they paid me back for the current value of what was taken out. So they didn't give me enough money to redo all of my carpeting and all the drywall up to where they cut it out. They gave me the current value. So because that car carpet had been installed like seven or eight years before and you know, it had been worn a little bit, it wasn't perfect. For that whole thing, they gave me $2,000. So I had to put some more of my own money in to actually refinish my basement again, which circles back to the emergency fund being there for an emergency. The next thing I would say about being prepared for emergencies is going back to what I talked about, about minimalism and not owning too much stuff and also knowing what is important. Uh, if you have to leave your home in a hurry, if something is happening where you can only save a few possessions, it is going to be infuriating if you don't know where your meaningful things are, you have so much stuff that it is overwhelming you, and you're probably going to miss something that is of value to you. Um, I had a little bit of personal experience with this, and it actually taught me a lot about what was of value to me and what wasn't. Uh, at one point in my life, I was living with a in a roommate situation, which had not gone well. Basically what happened is that there was a person who was coming back to a shared home to get their things out of it and that person was um, not in a good headspace about the whole thing and I was very worried that they were going to damage um, my home and my possessions when they came. I chose not to stay because I thought that would have escalated the whole thing and I am worth more than any of my possessions are um, so basically I had a friend come in look around the place in the morning took pictures of all of it to prove what the place looked like before and then left and what I was thinking to myself is if things are damaged I can replace most things you know with money what is it that I could not replace what has sentimental value to me that I actually want to make sure isn't destroyed because I can't replace it and I end up putting all those things in my car and going to work for the day with everything that was of value to me in my car. And it was not as much as you would think it would be. Um, I brought along my laptop. Um, I had gotten my pet out of the house for the day. I had a couple of photo albums, but a lot of my things now are on, um, are on my computer, on my external hard drive. But I had a few photo albums. I had uh, a couple of teddy bears from when I was a kid and a handful of cookbooks that were handwritten by my grandmother. And that was the moment where I realized how little was irreplaceable in what I owned and what really mattered to me. So circling back to the main point here is if you have really pared down what you own, if you don't have too much clutter, if you understand where all the things are value of you to you in your life, in an emergency situation, it's going to be very easy for you to take the small amount of things that really matter that can't be replaced with money and keep them safe.
The last thing I'm going to say is relating a little bit to my last point is that I've heard the expression before and I know that this is probably something that sounds better if you have money and resources, but if you have an emergency fund, it will be good for you, is if there's a problem that you can solve with money, it's not a real problem. <laughs> and I know that's, it's probably not a great saying, but if something happens to your home, like happened to mine, the carpet was ruined, the drywall was ruined, I can pay to fix that. It's not a life ending problem. It's not something that is unsolvable. Basically, I can pay money and solve that problem. You know, your health, your family's health, your pet's health, your safety, and probably a small handful of really um, irreplaceable mementos are things that you really want to care for. Everything else is materials that you can solve with money. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, especially if you don't have a lot of money, but when you're coming back for an emergency, just remember there are a handful of light things in life that are irreplaceable and everything else you can get there eventually. It might be if you're recovering from an emergency that it takes some time to save money up, it might be hard, you might need to pare back. Um, but in a lot of cases, this is what life is. It's dealing with problems that arise as best we can. So if you are dealing with an emergency, take a deep breath, you know, don't try to do everything at once. Um, just try to take care of things as best you can and know that you'll get through this. I mean, if something has happened to your home, if something has happened to some of your possessions, you will get there. It is emotionally difficult, but you can get through this. So I hope all the people in my area who are dealing with flooding right now have been able to, you know, get out the things that have true irreplaceable meaning to them and they will take care of everything else as they need to. It won't be fun, but it will get done. And the more that you're able to prepare in advance for an emergency, the better you're going to be in dealing with one when one comes up because very few of us get through life without some kind of emergency happening. So a little bit of a more serious topic today, but I hope something that will help you take a few steps. Again, what I would say, look at your insurance, have insurance, understand what your insurance covers, pare down the items in your life that are really meaningful for you and know where they are. Don't be worried about emergencies happening. They are things that you really can't control. That's the definition of an emergency, but you know, be like a good Girl Scout or Boy Scout and just be prepared. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye.